This is everything you need to know about C Sharp in one video. C Sharp is part of the C family of programming languages. So basically it has curly brackets and semicolons. It was developed by Microsoft, but it's now fully open source and cross-platform. You can build C Sharp applications to run on Windows, on Linux, on Mac, on mobile, thanks to Xamarin, and even in WebAssembly, thanks to Blazor. Here is a C Sharp application that calls a function. You can see the function has a return type of void and then a name and then some arguments. The body of the function is enclosed in these curly brackets here and each line is ended with a semicolon. Functions can also be static with a static keyword like this. Comments in C Sharp begin with two forward slashes like this. Variables, you used to declare variables by writing the type and then the variable name, but these days, C Sharp developers will almost exclusively use var everywhere. Var in C Sharp is not the same as var in JavaScript. It does not mean that you can put any type into this variable. Var simply means that you just want the compiler to work out what the type is for you. Here, if I hover over this variable, you can see that the compiler has worked out that this is a string. And this one down here, if I hover over this, this is a number. This is called implicitly typed variable. Implicit typing is good, so use it. There are a bunch of built-in data types in C Sharp, and they're fairly similar to those in other programming languages. So that's integers, floating point numbers, strings, that sort of thing. But you can also create your own data types. There are three ways to create data types in C Sharp. Classes, structs, and records. Records are a quick and easy way to represent the shape of some data. So they have fields which you declare like this in brackets after the record name. They're also immutable, so once you've created this record, you can't change it. Structs are for storing more primitive data types. And the main advantage of a struct is that that exists on the execution stack of your program. So it's not stored in heap memory and given a pointer like other objects. The whole struct is stored in that memory that your thread is given to run with. So for small data types, um, structs are a much more efficient way to store readily accessible values in memory. The third type of data type in C Sharp is by far the most common, and that is the class. Many programming languages have classes, and those in C Sharp are not much different. Classes are defined with the class keyword, and they can have one of five access modifiers that define the visibility of the class. Public means this is visible to everyone everywhere. Private means just within the scope of whatever was declaring this class. Protected is the declaring scope and anything that's inherited from it. Internal means just this assembly and file means just this file. Classes can have methods like this one and methods can have their own access modifiers as long as they are more restrictive than that of the class. So you can't have a public method on a private class basically. You can also inherit classes and there's a special keyword called abstract, which denotes that this class is only for inheriting. You can put abstract on the class name itself and then on any method if you want to force this method to be implemented in any overriding class. Classes can also implement as many interfaces as you like. An interface is declared with the word interface and it just defines methods and properties that the implementing classes must contain. And while we're on the subject of properties, C Sharp has a really nice shorthand syntax for declaring properties by using these get and set keywords here. You can actually expand out these getters and setters if you want to by adding some custom logic in there. But by default, you just need to write get and set and the compiler will create the property for you. It's also worth noting that you can add restrictive um, access modifiers onto these getters and setters as well. There's also this really useful shorthand for read-only properties. The arrow here is telling it to create a read-only property that returns this value. So doing this is the equivalent to writing out the full getter like this. C Sharp has got loads of cool features like this that will save you time and it will keep the amount of code you write to an absolute minimum, which is good. Another thing classes have is constructors and destructors. A constructor takes a bunch of parameters into the class when a new instance is created and a deconstructor spits out a bunch of parameters from within the class. You use a constructor when you want to create a new instance of the class with the new keyword. So you do the new keyword like this and you pass in any values onto the constructor. 
To use a deconstructor, you simply wrap the variables you want in deconstruct into brackets like this, and C Sharp knows to use that deconstruct method that you created uh, to create the values from the class. Record types can be deconstructed like this as well, just completely out the box. You don't need to implement any methods for them. So that's all of the object oriented stuff in C Sharp. What about the actual control flow of your program? Well, control statements in C Sharp include if, which is written with the condition in brackets, and then else, which comes after an if, and you can chain else and if together to create an else if statement. The curly brackets in if statements are required if you have more than one line of code inside the statement. As well as if statements, we also have the switch statement, and this is how we do pattern matching. You can define each case as a constant like this, but also you can put conditions in here. So here we're going to drop into this case if our variable is anything above 10. The switch statement can be written like this, but it can also be written like this, with our conditions inside the curly braces down here. This is just one of the ways that C Sharp has been introducing much more functional programming concepts into its syntax over recent years. This way of writing a switch statement is much more declarative, and this will be familiar to you if you've done more functional programming in other languages. So it's nice that C Sharp gives us this choice of how we want to style our code. You also have for loops and do while loops, and the most common type of loop, which is the for each. For each will iterate over every element in an iterable collection. If you know JavaScript, then it's worth pointing out that the for each loop uses in here the same way that JavaScript uses of. So that's nice and confusing, but the compiler will help you a lot if you get it wrong. And if we're gonna write a loop, then we should probably also look at collection types. C Sharp has arrays, which are declared like this, but it also has a whole bunch of collection data types in the system.collections namespace. You import a namespace by adding the using directive to the top of a file. So by using system.collections, then we can go ahead and create instances of some of these collections. So there's like the list, and there's a dictionary, and there's a queue. All of these collection methods and the array implement an interface called iEnumerable. iEnumerable is the interface that the for each statement looks at to decide if something can be used in a for loop. And you can create your own class that implements iEnumerable if you want to. You can also create a function that returns iEnumerable and generates results of that function using the yield statement. Here we have a function that uses the yield statement to create an infinite array. So that's kind of cool. It's more often used to defer the execution of some code while iterating over a data set. Here, we're only performing this calculation as and when this collection is iterated over. So we can create much more efficient mapping functions and things that act on large arrays by using iEnumerable and yield. C Sharp comes included with a bunch of functions that you can use on iEnumerable collections, such as select, which is basically a map in other languages, and aggregate, which is a reduce function. C Sharp also supports the use of async and await to control asynchronous code execution. You use these by adding async to the function name and then calling await inside the function whenever you want to await the execution of another asynchronous piece of code. Generics are also included in C Sharp. They're used with the triangle brackets like this on any function name or class definition. You can use the keyword where after the argument list to add restrictions onto your generic type argument. So here we're saying this generic type argument T has to be something that implements this interface. And that's all the language features that we're going to go over. If you want to get started writing C Sharp today, then go and grab an IDE, install .NET and get going. The IDE for writing C Sharp is traditionally Visual Studio, but increasingly these days people are using more lightweight Visual Studio code, and also this IDE called Rider from JetBrains. So go grab any of these, create a new C Sharp console application by hitting .NET new console on the command line, and start playing with Android C Sharp yourself. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll be publishing a few more videos soon about C Sharp and some of the cool things that you can do with it. So stay tuned for that, and if you've got any questions, of course, pop them in the comments section below. My name is James Charles, and I'll see you in the next video on the Train to Code YouTube channel.